Hey students, uh, we're on to day three of the distributive property, and today we're gonna be talking about distributive factoring. And this, you're gonna probably go, oh, that looks really familiar because we're gonna go back to using this, uh, this thing here. So like if I have 12 and 24, and I wanna find a, the factor that goes into both of those, I could use 12, but I could also go, you know what, let's just start with three, that's four, that's eight, I got two, that's two, that's four. Oh, two goes into that also, two, that's one, and this is two, okay? So we're gonna be using the cake method to do distributive factoring today. And you're gonna see how that works. Remember those numbers, if we multiply them on the outside, that gives us our greatest common factor. And uh, that greatest common factor can come in very handy sometimes. So let's go through your bell work first. All right, so here's your bell work and we are writing an equivalent expression on number one. So let's take a look at that really quick. Um, we're gonna be using what, and I'm glad that it talks about this right here. We're gonna be using um, the distributive property to write an equivalent expression. So what we're going to do is we're going to do 4 times 5x, which is 20x, and then 4 times 2 is 8. Right here, this is an equivalent expression for this. So, not very difficult. So again, we're going to use distributive property. We're going to go 6 times r is 6r, and 6 times negative 8 is negative 48. So 6r minus 48 is the equivalent expression that we're looking for. So I'll circle those just so we can see what the answer is. Moving on to number two, Maria has twice as many crayons as Corrine. Write an algebraic expression to represent the number of crayons that Maria has. Okay, so we know, um, I like to sometimes use the initials or their first, the letter in their first name. So Maria, has twice as many crayons as Kareen. So if I take Kareen and I times her by two, it's going to give me Maria's total number of crayons. So pretty simple to kind of figure that out. Um, so it's two times C equals M. So let's play with this for a minute. So let's say that Kareen has six crayons. So I'm gonna take the six, so C, C equals six. I'm gonna plug it in here. So two times six equals 12. So that means Maria has 12 crayons. So again, sitting there and thinking things through um, is really important when you're think when you're doing story problems so thinking things through and making it work that that right there is going to be um, one of the most important things that you do when you're doing story problems okay so this next one where it looks like we're dividing uh, decimals so we have one and 44 hundredths being divided by three again reviewing this first number is the number that's being divided. So it goes underneath the little umbrella or whatever you want to call it. And the three is the divisor. It's the one doing the dividing. Because if I say that, it's one and 44 hundredths divided by three. Okay, there are no uh, decimals to move here. So we're just going to move it straight up. Let's change colors here. Three does not go into one. Put a zero. 3 does go into 14, however, four times. That gives us 12. Subtract, we get 2. Bring down our 4. 3 goes into 24 eight times. So we have 48 hundredths as our answer. All right, moving on, let's do num the second one here. And this one we do have some other numbers to be fiddling around with, so let's do that. We have 100 being divided by 50 hundredths. Okay, so I'm going to move the decimal over twice, and then twice here, and then up. All right, so now we're just 
pretending, well, we're, we're, we're done with the decimal part of this. That's the hard part. And now we are just going to say 50 doesn't go into 1. It doesn't go into 10. But it does go into 100 twice. So that gives me 100. I subtract. I get 0. I bring down a 0. 50 doesn't go into 0. Bring down another 0. 50 doesn't go into 0. Bring down another 0. 50 doesn't go into a 0. So it's, the answer is 200. All right, uh, that is your bell work. Um, get that completed and entered into Go Formative, and let's move on. Okay, here are your notes. We're on page 53. When you turn to page 53, you should see that we already did half this page, that uh, we used the distributive property to, uh, to do this. So let's take a look at this and see what's different today. So on this first one, you can see that we use the distributive property and we went five times three is 15 and then we went five times four is 20. There's my little Santa hat. Well, today, what's different is we are going to take what we got, 15, and we are going to be using this cake method to turn it back into this. So what numbers go into 15 and 20? Five. 5 goes into 15 3 times, and 5 goes into 20 4 times. And I'm just going to bring this plus up here. And there, it, it, it doesn't simplify anymore. So that's how I know that this, I put a parenthesis, take this 5 right here, and just write it right here. So I turned it back from this back into what we started with. So yeah, we can use the cake method to turn things back, and that is what we call distributive factoring. So let's let's take what we've done here. So I'm going to take, I, remember, I, I did this. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times x is 3x. So that's where that 6 plus 3x came from. So we're going to take that 6 plus 3x, and we're going to use the cake method to turn it back into this. That's how we'll know if we've done it correctly, if we can turn it back into that. Okay, what numbers go into 6 and 3x? Well, 3. 3 goes into 6 twice. 3 goes into 3x. Well, 1x times, and the way that we write 1x is just x. And then we bring the plus up. So we know that we got 2 plus x in parentheses. And we bring this 3, and we put it on the outside. Did we end up with the same thing that we started out with over here? Yes, we did. So we know we did it correctly. Let's do that one more time. Maybe uh, this one is a little bit different, but it's not that bad. Again, going over, we went 2 times 4x equals 8x, and 2 times 3y is 6y. So that's where that came from. So let's go 8x plus 6y, put it in our cake box or whatever you want to call it. What numbers go into 8 and 6? Well, 2 does. 2 goes into 8x, 4x times, and 2 goes into 6y, 3y times. Bring our plus up. Let's rewrite it. 4x plus 3y in parentheses with a 2 on the outside. So hopefully you're picking up on how this works. So let's do one more. 5 times p is 5p. 5 times negative 11 is negative 55. So we are going to take that and now turn it back into what we started out with. 5p minus 55. What number goes into both of them? 5. We get p and we get 11. p minus 11. So rewrite that. p minus 11 with a 5 on the outside. Is that what we started out with? Yes. So we know that we did it correctly. All right. So that's what we're going to be practicing here on our next paper on the practice sheet. And uh, then we'll give you an assignment on it. Okay, so we're looking at your practice side, so let's do that. We're going to turn this, we're gonna fat, now these don't have variables. 
Do we have to freak out? No, we can just do, we just do what we always do. We're gonna go 30 plus 25, put it in our cake. Now, what numbers go into 30 and 25? Well, five does. Five goes into 36 times, and five goes into 25 five times. Are there any factors that go into six and five? Nope, so we're done. So we bring our six plus five, put it in parentheses, and bring the five up here. So our answer is five parentheses, six plus five. All right, let's go on to number two. Number two, we're going to write that expression down. 35 minus 14, put it in our cake. What numbers go into it? Seven. Seven goes into this five times. It goes into this twice. So we're going to take five minus two, put it in parentheses, and bring the seven up. There's our answer. <clears throat> Let's try number three. Number three, 81 minus 18. Nine goes into both of those. It goes into 81 nine times. It goes into this twice. So we got nine minus two in parentheses with a nine on the outside. It's kind of, you know, once you get doing this, it's not that hard. I mean, again, the key is knowing your multiplication tables. If you struggle with that, there might be some of these that you struggle with, but you can use your calculator at this point. So hopefully it's not too bad. Okay, well, I know that 10 goes into both of these. So 10 goes into that six times, and it goes into this one 10 times. Oh, look at that. There's another factor that goes into it, two. So we have to go three and five. Okay, so we have three plus five because nothing else goes into those. But now what do I put on the outside? I have a two and a 10 on the outside. Well, we have to multiply those together, just like we did when we found greatest common factor. So our number out here is 20, okay? Um, yeah, you have to take it all the way out there. Now, there are other equivalent expressions here. Like this right here, this uh, is an equivalent expression. I could have said 2 and then the 6 plus 10. That would have been an equivalent expression. But it is, again, we didn't find the, uh, the greatest common factor, so these numbers are is small. Sometimes it asks for how many different equivalent expressions can you write? And you need to write different things. There are different factors that you can take out and it'll, uh, the, the things that are in your parentheses will look different. And we will see some of those a little bit later on. Okay, so number five, we're finding, we're finally with to one with a uh, variable. So we're, we treat it just the same. Okay, what numbers go into 12 and 18? Well, let, maybe you don't know the greatest common factor off the top of your head. We're going to just start with 2. It goes into this 6x times, and it goes into this 9 times. Oh, there's a 3 that goes into that. That goes 2x plus 3. Okay, so I've got 2x plus 3 in parentheses with 3 times 2, which is 6 on the outside. Okay, number six, 4y plus 10, 2 goes into it, 2y times, and 5, so we've got 2y plus 5 in parentheses with a 2 on the outside. All right, number seven. Number seven, we have 32y minus 48. Well, I know that four goes into both of them, so let's do four. Four times eight is 32, and four times 12. Oh, I guess I better have another one that goes into it, two. That's four y minus 6. So 4y minus 6 in parentheses. Oh, look at that. There's a 2 that goes into that one. That's 2y minus 3. So I'm going to go 2y minus 3, and then I'm going to go 2 times 2 times 4. Hmm, 2 times 2 times 4 is 16. So my answer is right there. 
It's trend number eight. 15y minus 40. Well, five goes into it. Three times for 15, so 3y and eight times. Now there's nothing that goes into three and eight. So I know that that right there, 3y minus eight is in my parentheses and the five is on the outside. Okay, let's look at this one. 13x plus 39y. Well, 13 goes into both of those. I could say 1x, or the, the way that we do it in algebra is we just say it's x, but if you have the 1 right there, it's fine. And then we know that it goes into this 3y times. So we have x plus 3y with 13 on the outside. All right, let's try this last, well, it's not the last problem, but it's the last one like this. So we have 21x minus 42y. I know that seven goes into both of those. That's three X minus six Y. Oh, look at that. Three goes into both of those. So that would be X or one X. It doesn't matter if you have the one minus two Y. So X minus two Y with a 21 on the outside. Oh, I did that wrong. With a parentheses with a 21. So there you go on those. Let's take a look at this story. All right, this last problem. Um, see if you can do that one on your own. Again, I'm going to give you some hints here. Um, area equals length times width. So use the information that you have up here and plug it into this formula. All right, I am looking at your um, assignment. And you're going to be using that same thing, the cake method on all of these to do, uh, to, to find the, the, to factor the expression. Um, I do want to look at number 17, however, because number 17 is one of those ones where um, we can, it says, write five expressions that are equivalent to 20x plus 20, or plus 100. So, I just want to point out here that we're just going to use 20x plus 100. And we are going to find all of the factors that go into, into this. So could we use 2? Yeah, 2 goes into both of these. So 2 goes into 20 10 times, and 2 goes into 150 times. So this is one of them. We would have 10x plus 50 in parentheses with a 2 on the outside. That is one of them. You need to find five of them. So I helped you out with there. So you're going to find the other factors that go into both of those numbers and pull it out, and it's going to you're going to have different expressions that are equivalent to this one right here. So hopefully that little hint helps you out. Um, I think you guys can handle this assignment. It, you know, especially if you watch the notes and watch the practice, you should be very good at this. So there you go. Good luck. If you have problems, as always, ask your teacher and we will see you next time.